Hi, I'm John Binney. What are you most scared of saying? Do these statements sound scary for you to say? I am psychic. I talk to spirit guides. I talk to aliens. I speak light language. I remember my past lives. I used to be a witch. I see ghosts. I see dead people. I see negative entities. I see negative attachments. Okay, so these are all things that I was very scared of saying, and I'd like to take you on a journey through each one and tell you a little bit about my experiences, some tips for you to be able to step into your power and allow yourself to um, really face these fears. And uh, where it's possible, in the time allowed, I'll be uh, also practicing some of these things as we go. Okay, so let's start with the big one. I am psychic. So, where do we start? Well, I used to believe, um, until my uh, awakening, if you like, in 2017, when I started uh, meditating each day, uh, up until that point, I was very obsessed about um, ghost hunting and, um, and and UFOs and conspiracies, and I felt that psychics were somehow different to, um, in terms of like their their DNA, if you like, than than me. And so I used to create that kind of separation, and sometimes um, I would idolize um, people that call themselves psychic. And really, as my uh, meditation practice deepened, I realized that it took me 900 days, and I remember this vividly, 900 days because I write a song each day based on the messages I get from my um, spirit guides and meditation each day. And so I could track the days, I could count the days, and I remember as I hit 900, um, so that's 900 days of meditation, I realized that actually very early on I'd already been using this psychic ability to be able to, to talk to spirit guides and that I was using a psychic ability. And and then you think, well, does that make me psychic? Well, you get to decide like what you know you, you label yourself as or label your abilities as. But really the, the term for me psychic means anything that's beyond um, the kind of normal uh, uh, e explainable uh, gifts and abilities that we have as as humans and for me my psychic abilities have continued to expand across all kinds of different dimensions and so it includes talking to spirit guides talking to um, galactic beings from around the universe um, talking to other people that are alive like telepathy right um and being able to talk to uh, trees and plants and animals. And also, um, I use them a lot in my um, my client work. So when I'm doing one-on-one -on -one services or teaching people how to develop their psychic abilities. And a lot of it starts with energy and deep deepening your meditation practice, your quantum energy healing and clearing and protection and then moving on to being able to uh, talk to our spirit guides. Um, I do feel, and we'll come on to this a bit later as well, but a lot of us have past life um, wounding. So um, I, I offer a service called uh, the, the Hidden Witch Wound, and it's all about going back to those past lives where we've been persecuted and um, often for, for the, the word witch or psychic or, you know, these terms, these practices that we part, uh, participated in. And so that's been a really helpful way for me to understand as well, both from my own healing from my past lives and also what other people go through. And it's just a whole wide range through the hundreds of sessions that I've done. You know, people, um, anything that sets people aside, that instills fear in others and often these gifts and abilities i often see um like the the, the marvel x-men movies there's this um there's this really interesting um aspect of them that there's a fear you know associated with people that, who have extra abilities if you like and i feel that we can all choose to develop these these psychic abilities so my my um my ask of you is, is be brave, you know, come out, 
of your psychic closet and say, I am psychic. I have psychic abilities. And don't hide away in other terms that dim your light. Uh, it's totally up to you what you call yourself or how you label your abilities. And, and, and many of these are just labels, right? But I do feel that um, if you restrict yourself to only talking about your intuition and perhaps only even your, your higher self or your highest self, you're not describing all of your capabilities. So if you have feel you're, you're quite telepathic, you feel like you perhaps should doing work for um, a client and you feel like you know you don't need to do it while they're there um and then you can just you know go ahead and and you know do do the work with their permission with their uh permission for you to access their energy and then and then you know give them back that um that work that result that healing those messages the reading the coaching whatever it is you do it's beyond just intuitive right um you are using uh, your psychic abilities and so there's just a whole spectrum uh, and these terms you know can be helpful they can be triggering for people um they can be triggering for us to say but i feel like as with all these statements the best thing to do is to say it and then you begin to normalize it in your in your reality and as you normalize it and make it a safe word, a safe statement for you to say, the easier it becomes for others. You're leading by example. And I don't feel, I also don't feel that you're, you're psychic or you're not. I just feel like we're, we all have psychic capabilities. And just like, you know, I don't, um, I don't really bodybuild, right? <laughs> I do, I do, uh, gym work, uh, five days a week, but not, um, not really to, to gain muscle and, you know, if, but if I did, I know that I could build those muscles, right? I could go on like a, you know, weight gaining program. And, um, it's just like your, your psychic abilities, like you can develop your psychic abilities and you'll, you already have muscles. You already have psychic muscles. It's just your, it's up to you whether you could, you know, you go and focus on developing those or not. Um, and it takes practice and time and commitment. Um, but you can do it if you, if you, if you want to. Um, and some of the questions that I've had about uh, am I, um, whether, whether I'm psychic um, recently, just in the last couple of weeks, I had some questions. Um, one was, how psychic are you? Are you all the way psychic? Um, to which I answered yes, because <laughs> like in the in the spur of the moment, like I don't really know what the full spectrum. I mean, there's all the clairs, like there's all the different abilities, clairvoyance, clairsentience, clairaudience. There's, there's, there's all these different kind of labels to the different abilities that we give for psychic abilities. Um, however, I feel like I've, I'm already pretty advanced. And in that, I know that I've developed that through hundreds of sessions with clients and I teach it to, uh, to other people in, um, my, my higher self foundational training. And what's really interesting is that, um, I also feel that I continue to expand those abilities. So, you know, whilst I was partly answering that in jest, saying I'm all the way psychic, it's like, or all the things psychic, it's, it's saying that it's a continued journey for, for everyone. And I, I feel like I've got a lot to learn. I'll continue to grow over the coming years. Um, but it's a great place to start is by just being clear with yourself, like what your abilities are. Um, Okay, uh, I talk to spirit guides, so I just want to acknowledge that I didn't really do anything about being psychic in that um, in, in that first one, but I will through these others, um, because they are all psychic abilities. Uh, so the first is uh, I talk to spirit guides. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, when I uh, began meditation each day and I started asking my spirit guides. So I'd heard these things called spirit guides uh, on, on the internet, on, on YouTube. And I was like, ooh, they sound interesting. I wonder if I have spirit guides. And so I started asking to see them and I started experiencing, you know, visuals and sensations. And, uh, and then I began to get messages and then I began to ask like explicitly. And as I received those messages, it was really powerful for me. Um, 
initially one spirit guide. This is really common for people to have like one step forwards to represent all of their guides. And it's often like the first step in developing your your communication with your spirit guide. And I, th I do feel that we develop our psychic abilities at a pace that we're ready for. So no matter how hungry we are or how much we think we need something, there's this like continued growth of um, what receiving the upgrades and abilities and growth in our abilities that we can cope with at any given time. Um, and yeah, to begin with, I don't think I was ready to, to be introduced to all eight of my spirit guides. Um, so I, I began talking with just one of them, um, who I still talk to to this day. Um, uh, and her name is, is Maya. And uh, she's like a, a very much a, an Earth, like a planet Earth uh, elemental spirit. Um, and Maya, my guide, also helped me like be introduced to my other guides. And if I fast forward to um, just uh, just the other weekend, I was teaching uh, a class for my higher self foundational training, and it's by week six. So just from literally from starting at the very basics, like mindfulness meditation, and then into my own um, kind of brand, my own uh, developed uh, meditations called spirit guide meditations, like those over six weeks, so from zero to six weeks, um, all of the class, and this is the second time I've run the class now, um, the, the training course, um, all of them were able to be introduced to eight spirit guides. So to meet them, get their names, where they're from, um, you know, what their superpower is, how they work with them, um, what their what their purpose is to work with the, the, the clients, the person in this lifetime. They did that in in just a one hour. <laughs> so it's like uh, six weeks in and you do a one hour Zoom call together and I take you through uh, connect with each of your guides and um it's incredible like because you're doing the introductions you're doing the hard you know the hard work to connect with each each guide know their names and be able to communicate with them individually and each of them have superpowers right so it's you get to be part of your your own fully of your own spirit team and not just proxied by one of them or you know end up talking about spirits or um you know my intuition like you can actually name these beings and get to know them, you know, go and follow up with them after the session and, and, and talk to them individually. So, <laughs> so, so let's talk to one of my spirit guides. Um, and I have set up a safe space already, and that's really important before we do any of this work. And I will just take a, a deep breath and I'll just, I'll set the intention first of all, and I'll just ask, I'm going to ask Maya because we've just been speaking about her and I feel her, her energy uh, close to me. Uh, I'm going to ask her um, just to uh, answer a question for me, and um, and then we'll uh, and then we'll move on to the next one. Okay. My spirit guide, Maya. How can people best? explain that they talk to their spirit guides. The answer is simple. The answer is to just tell your truth. Tell your own unique individual truth of your experiences. And to understand that everyone has their own unique truth. And also that the English language our own languages aren't always amazingly great at being able to articulate our own unique experiences, but we find ways. The more that we express our truth, the greater the broadening of the spectrum of the energy, the colours, the frequencies that we can articulate in our experiences. So when we say, I talk to my spirit guides, we're able to expand on that 
and explain how it feels for us. What actions do we take when we talk to our guides? What do we talk about? Why do we do it? These are all important if we want to explain our truth to others. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Maya. Um, I, to begin with, I was expecting just to do some like a conversation, um, and then quite quickly, I don't know if you heard it in my voice, like she just, I, I agreed to let her in to, to me to, to channel. So it was a bit more than just talking to spirit guides, it was channeling my spirit guide, but I, I hope that helps. And yeah, what a beautiful message, right? Like um, that whole spectrum of our truth, you know, even just saying I talk to spirit guides, I realized is quite restrictive. And so if you want to, you know, perhaps you're sat with a friend, maybe you're at a dinner table with a stranger or in a, in a pub or whatever you're doing, talking to someone, explaining the why is a very human thing, right? It's a great way of connecting with others. Like, why would you speak to your spirit guides? You know, so I think answering that question can help you explain your truth and um, your, your purpose behind it. I also want to acknowledge that, um, as, as Maya was saying this, that I also speak to your spirit guides. So if you gave me permission, um, I would connect into your spirit guides. And it's a very similar process. Although what I do is I set up a safe space and I invite in your spirit guides and so that they come into this space so that I can see them with my third eye. I can feel them, see their like their, their body, their shape, their their clothes, their um, their origins, the energy that they exude, their their superpowers, all these things, and just like you're doing, if you know you a human walked into the same room, and then also to um, to talk with them, and uh, just like I was doing with Maya, it's a very similar process, but you know everyone's guides are very different, and um, that's a really beautiful experience. Okay, uh, let me get a coffee for a second. Okay, the next one is I talk to aliens. <laughs> wow, this is so cool. Um, and to explain my my journey, I I think from about uh, the early two thousands, um, two thousand three, maybe maybe two thousand four, I began becoming obsessed with um, UFOs. And I think it was 2004 to really about 2017, maybe even a bit after. Um, I would uh, watch UFO uh, videos on YouTube a lot and, and TV shows. Um, I felt a bit like Neo in, in the first Matrix movie where he's looking for the Matrix the whole time. Like I felt like I was looking for the truth. And I feel like that truth seeking aspect of talking to aliens is is really important. Um and it's really funny because uh, I don't use the word alien much now. And it's not because I, I don't talk to them. I do talk to aliens. It's more that I feel like the term alien is like alienating, right? It, it creates this divide. It's like saying there are those from Earth and then there's everybody else in the universe and they're all aliens. Um, but it's not as simple as that, right? Um, when... And we come on to past lives in a bit, but as we go through like past lives, you can realize that you you yourself have lived on many different planets, and so we are the aliens ourselves. Like our our souls have reincarnated many times, and we just happen to be on Earth at this time. And so to create that division by saying, well, just because in this lifetime I'm an Earthling. And then you guys are currently, you know, you came from a different planet in this lifetime that we're that I'm alienating you, I think is not always helpful. Um, but I'm, I'm not against the, the term and you can use what you want. I tend to say uh, I talk to galactic beings or galactic brothers and sisters. Um, I feel that the term galactic is helpful because it indicates that we're like we're all in a galaxy. Right. We're all in the Milky Way galaxy, for example. And so I feel like it's more inclusive that it doesn't create a divide between us and that I feel that I am galactic just as much as every other being in the universe. And when you share the same universe as all these other beings, that feels very inclusive. Uh, how do you talk to them? 
Well, good news is um, our spirit guides often, and I'm just try- I was just trying to think, have I met any spirit guides, like a team of spirit guides for a client where they're all human only? M- maybe. I've certainly met, you know, I've met clients, guides, so often it's a team of eight at any one time, but those numbers can flex. And the, the beings themselves like step forwards and into the team of eight and step back. And you know, so they, they swap around um, depending on what's going on in the person's life. And yeah, that's really, really quite interesting because um, for some clients, you know, I only get to see maybe the, the, the human guide, um, like an ascended master, a relative, uh, sometimes they're very famous, um, you know, in, in, in Earth's history. And so that that's, you know, that's entirely possible that you can have, of course you can, you can have, you know, a team of spirit guides from anywhere in the universe. So why not just Earth? Uh, just Earth. Earth's great. <laughs> so I feel like we should talk to an alien just now. Um, and I'll talk to one of my guides. And... Um, I'm going to talk to um, um, Marita. She is a um, uh, a, a mantis guide. So just like the insect uh, praying mantis in um, here on Earth, uh, she's a very tall, uh, very um, loving um, being, and um, she. I won't go into too much detail about about her because we can ask her some of these questions, right? Um, because uh, because one thing I find really funny about now that the fact that I can talk to aliens, I don't really ask a lot about you know the day to day stuff like what's your planet like, where are you from, do you have cars, do you have spaceships, do you have money? Like these are all all questions um, that we can we could ask just now. But it's it's funny so much of this journey, just like with spirit guides and then the other being, is not about the answers so much as the questions that you ask it's like you're you're ready to receive the answers to the questions you ask and so it's all about developing you know the right questions okay so let's talk to an alien a galactic being this is um let's talk to my spirit guide my mantis being marita just take a deep breath in Marita, my mantis guide, where are you from in this universe? And she is showing me, she's trying to show me the star system that she's in. So she's taking me out of the Milky Way. And she's taking me past like many other galaxies. I'm counting one, two, three, five. Like she's showing these kind of almost in a row, like like a route that you would take if you could fly really, really fast. And then she's taking me to her home world. I've never seen this before, so it, it may take a little bit of time for me to just digest it. It's very large. It's like, um, it's very large and it's very green. It, it, um, it reminds me a little bit of Earth, but it's much bigger. And it feels like the, the size of, of, our, of our sun, like a, just a giant planet. And she's, um, where it's like we're floating just outside of this planet just now in, in space. And Marita showing me that there's this beautiful resonance frequency coming from her planet, um, and it's like a it's like a chorus, a song of every living thing, including the the energy signature of her her planet. So there's like you know bird like beings and insectoids and um, just billions and billions of living things, and there's these huge canopies. Like a, I had the sense of like this very uh, like it's like, yeah, it's like an Amazonian rainforest, like, but the entire planet's covered in it. 
um with huge like rivers that flow in between all the 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 trees there and everything's giant like she herself so marisa how tall are you okay so i'm not used to seeing her at this height so i, I usually see her at about um seven eight foot tall she's saying that if she stands fully upright uh, she's just over 20 feet tall and she said so the scale of the trees the branches you know, the branches easily support her and the leaves even the leaves support her um and and she's very big so everything's at a giant scale and it's it's something to do with um the scale of her planet is related to the fact that um the energy frequency so from this like the soul from the core of her planet of our of, of our mother world um wants to be able to join in this resonance frequency with every living thing on the planet so it's like a, a harmonic um like a sound and this is like the baseline to the song of the whole planet and it's it's very much this kind of it's like a constant um uh hum and um rhythm that's right a rhythm to like a song and so the rest of the beings all all sing together and there's purpose behind this like the the planet is on this continued like it's like a working cycle to continue to both ascend and transmit these beautiful energies out across the universe and it makes a lot of sense for marita because she's very good at um the the detail and connecting it with like what's unique about you know a situation or a being or a question um and also she has this like beautiful love and connection and great scale and i'd say grandeur to to her her abilities um and I, i'd just like to ask what's the name of your your planet marita she's she's saying it to me right? she said she knows i'm going to find it hard to say okay please please repeat it it's quite hard She's saying, saying it really fast. If I slow it down, it's like Maratia Tokataya. Maratia Tokataya. Maratia Tokataya. Maratia Tokataya. Maratia Tokataya. Wow. And I'm asking, like, your name's really similar, Mar Marita. And the planet is Mara. Like, Marisa. Okay, she said it's um, her name means uh, like off worlder. So she's an she is off of her world as she travels, and so um, there's like m the Marita part of the planet is like the, the like the home meaning, and then the Mar uh, Marita uh, for her is more like the um, the travelers have this name. So like her, what she's really calling herself is like the, you know, the, 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 the intergalactic traveling um, mantis being. <laughs> oh, that's so lovely. Thank you for sharing those questions. Um, and thank you for uh, listening to this video um, because it's really exciting to get these questions and get these answers as, as we go. And it really encourages me sometimes to just get maybe a bit lazy and I don't ask these questions of my guides um when i could ask this anytime <laughs> we can talk to aliens anytime okay uh i speak light language there there's a big one now i i also want to to add on to that one i speak dragon light language um there are like entire videos on light language on the internet uh some of which are really good and you know great at um uh you know teaching you I also have a training course um, on my website and on Udemy um, where you can learn how to speak light language. Um, I would just say that just be discerning, you know, including with myself, but be discerning 
with anyone who's speaking a language to you that you don't understand in in your your native tongue in in English or whatever your native tongue is and so you have to use your energetic like discernment like listen to your heart listen to don't be like fooled by people that are just throwing their arms around speaking really fast and you know um and you also have to be really clear about when someone's speaking like language like like what is their intention who if they're channeling it who they're channeling it from um so i see it as a communication vehicle and you know so don't just you know like you wouldn't just get in someone's car because it looked cool regardless of where they were going and end up driving off a cliff like that's like that's a really bad thing um so so yeah uh, there's there's some of the kind of the basics about um what to look out for with with light language i was scared of speaking light language because um I, well i just thought people would think i'm crazy i mean it's quite and it's quite funny right because um I that happened to me when I first started sharing stuff, probably like 2017, 2018, um, maybe even into 2019. I was sharing more and more online. I'd be sharing messages and talking about things, and um, and some you know uh, friends would say to me, like or friends at the time would say to me, like John, are you okay? Like what what what's wrong? Like why are you, why are you talking like this? Like what's this thing you're saying? Um, and there are like I, I feel you can incrementally build your your bravery right and it, and it's okay to do it scared um i started uh i didn't start with dragon black language because i didn't actually know it when i first started i just started with like my you know the, the light language that came through to me when i set the intention to channel it from my guides or from my higher self and i started doing it with music and that that helped because you know uh, there are songs there's, there's a lot of songs out there that have like their own kind of you know chants or 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 words that you don't that aren't really a language um and so that that's okay <laughs> and so in these art forms you can be more expressive uh more freely it just depends on you know uh, trying these things out first the other thing i would do is um I feel like if you start a video or a song or like a poem, like uh, first, like the hardest thing to do is like to go straight into the scary thing. It's the same for all these, right? Like so being, you know, saying I am psychic. I talk to spirit guides. I talk to aliens. And then I speak light language. Like if you just start the video by saying these things, it's really hard because it's triggering for people and it's triggering or it could be triggering for you. Um, so that's another thing is like here we are 30 minutes in 33 minutes in and i'm about to speak light language and, and then dragon light language and there'll be likely fewer people it's almost like you're um it's like this uh safety in um uh what how to, how to describe it when you put something out in the public uh safety in, in plain sight you know hidden in plain sight um so yeah you can do these things as well right you can just put them out there and then just see uh see what happens because if someone's really interested in what you're saying they'll keep going with you right they'll they'll follow the way through and then you can just build up to like seeing these things up front uh and the more you do it the more you'll lose you know followers or friends that just don't resonate with you and frankly like you don't want them in your life like they're not going to help you right um I'm not saying that you should just start going to like the shops and only ever answering the phone in like light language and stuff. Um, you will alienate people, but you know, for people that you want to communicate with or you really want to share your content with, uh, get key messages out there too. Like, just be yourself, be your whole self. Um, and and also uh, one of the things I do with light language is when I go to the the bathrooms, the toilets uh because it always has great acoustics i'll often like sing or sp just speak light language and i do it in meditation as well uh each day and I, f I find that just really liberating and if i've not spoken light language for a few days or something then i'll just start doing it um so it's my turn let's let's do some light language um so i'm not going to do dragon light language first because that's my go-to and i find it the easiest 
Um, so let me, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go back to my guide Maya because I don't think I've ever asked her for uh, to channel light language through me, and I think that'd be really beautiful to do. I'm take a deep breath. Maya, please speak light language through me and give a message of love to those who are willing to receive it. Ara i uromoa ti chi ti ki onu. Tarama o ti ea. Aichi chi mo ti sinia maho. Arnia ya mo ti sinia ya amata. Mariana toko mo ti anaka ta ti di ramori anamaka. Ara, 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 ura, ura. <laughs> wow, thank you, Maya. That was really powerful. I've never done that uh, with Maya before. And it was this very, like, grand um, expression. Now, of course, you get to interpret it uh, how you, you wish. Um, and for me, it was very much about, very much in, like empowering um, us at this time, um, here on Earth at this time. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, let's do some dragon like language. So I found this uh, scarier to um, communicate because it is scarier, right? Like I'm I roar more like a dragon. And, and also the more I do it, the more my vocally, my, my um, throat chakra and my, my vocal cords open up. Um, so if you if you're not used to it, a little bit of a, a, a pre warning is that um, there's a lot of roaring, <laughs> but it's very loving. So I'm just going to take a breath and I'm going to um, ask my dragon guide to step forwards and also give a love a, a message of love and empowerment. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. And I must admit, I've been working with my dragon um, guide for some time. In fact, maybe as much as a couple of years before I really asked their name and like where they're from. And um, their 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 name is 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 as you heard at the end of that is Muia Muia and Muia is um, this dragon light language term for um, it's like an energy for remember who you are. It's like an activation. And um, she always ends this uh, transmission, her transmissions with this, this muya. It's like, remember who you are, but it's also remembering who, who she is. Um, so oh, I just love that. <laughs> Thank you so much. So there's light language. Okay. I remember my past lives. I do. <laughs> And how did that happen? Um, the I definitely visited places. You know, I live in Scotland, and there was like tons of castles and you know sacred sites that I visited. And you get like um, just mixes of of like flashbacks when I'm in these locations. You know, I see what it was like living there, the smells, like the what the people were doing, the, the animals, you know, the the smoke and the fires, the the sounds. Like it was. Um, by powerful but um it wasn't until uh i i started to have my own remembrances um that it became more real for me and so the first one of all places right i was on the train home from edinburgh to um to dunbar where i live it's not long right it's like 20 22 minutes 
I was chatting with a friend, um, and and she lives over in the US, and we were chatting. We'd been chatting some time already about you know things in this life, like spirit guides and light language. And I said to her, I'm beginning to remember now. I'm being shown uh, a past life we shared together, and that came through like. And I was all I was doing was like messaging her, and this 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 whole story came through, and it's 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 a huge story, so I won't go into it. But um, if you look at uh, if you look at my songs, there's a song called Eternal Now. So just search for John Binney Eternal Now, and you'll find the song. It's epic. I think it's like six or eight minutes or something long, and it describes that past life remembrance that I had. Um, and I felt like I was being shown. Um, because I was being like shown the visuals and the experiences and the feelings, and I, I also want to acknowledge that past lives, like they're not John's past life; they're my soul's past life. So you know, John, John Binney has a has a, a birth and a death at this lifetime in between, and I'm connected to to my soul, and my soul has had thousands of these different lifetimes. And so the remembrance that I have is like through my my soul, um, and I think that's really helpful when we think about past lives because it, it, I remember way back before I even you know knew any of this stuff before I went through my awakening in 2017, I, I just assumed that past lives we were like the kind of same person or the same personality, but um, you know whilst we there might have been a very similar being in the past to to John. Um, John is unique and I think that's really important like to remember yourself and to be very grounded always and you don't lose yourself in your you know in your journey and pursuit of like finding all these other versions of you because they are different versions of you and that's okay like everyone every part of you is unique um, and of course there's like shared energies and shared themes and shared gifts and, and all these things but you know keep giving yourself like your sovereignty and your own um your own boundaries and the things that you love to do and your own passions and what makes you unique um so yeah that started to come through a lot and i i have created a different video uh, a different video another video about uh, my past lives i should do an update i think i feel like i've done an update for maybe a year or maybe even more maybe two years um and it's almost like like my resume right it's like my soul resume of all these different lifetimes i, re I remember and some are, are very brief remembrances and others are very, very um, long and detailed. And I could, you know, I could recall like almost like from birth to, to, to death. Um, and I also do this uh, in, um, in my client sessions. I take people to their past lives and also parallel lives um, and then their future lives as well. So there's like, very much like the, the different dimensions of us. Um, and how will I practice this one just now to remember past life? Yeah, perhaps I'll ask my, my higher self um, to, let's ask my higher self and ask about my most recent um, past life. Like where, where was I, what, what did I do? So let's ask. Connecting in with my higher self. What was my soul's most recent past life? Where was I? Who was I? Just feeling this shift in energy as I'm taken there. It's on Earth. Born in the 1940s. No, sorry, alive in the 40s. Died in. Born in 1912. And I was a woman and I lived in. I was a mother of two children, 
been married. And my husband was very abusive. And it was actually my husband that ended my life. And yeah, it wasn't very old. Um, and I thought that I could control him. I thought that I could, um, control is the wrong word, but like, you know, calm him. But things just continued to escalate. And I lost my life. But well, thank you for, for showing me that. Um, it is a past life I've seen before, and I have done a lot of healing with that past life. I wasn't really aware of the, the two children, so thank you for that. And it just made me think, oh, I wonder what happened to those two children. Um, I will ask, my, my sense is that they are um, my uh, two children now, <laughs> uh, which, is, which is really cool. Um, so yeah that, and that's quite common that we you know we reincarnate with with tribes like soul tribes of, of of beings that we um continue to you know embody different like roles and um that's really beautiful so yeah there we go remembering past lives um i used to be a witch and i was going to add to that in a past life because i would i mean i probably would have been called a witch in uh in previous times with the stuff I do in this life, but in, um, in previous lives, I did, uh, uh identify as, as a witch. Um, and I feel like, I feel like the term witch has become, um, more of like, a, um, either very sacred or sometimes used as an abusive term. Like, you know, someone has a very witchy laugh or like they're like they're cackling away. Um, or they'll say things like, they're a witch, burn them. And it's like, um, you know, as a, as a joke. And um, yeah, there's still like a lot of healing to do with, with, the, with the term, um, I'd say collectively. For me, I feel very at peace with it. I see more and more the depth of um, how important the, the witches' roles have been in, in, in our past. And, you know, those that practice healing and um and spells and uh all that beautiful energy work often with very ancient and very nature centric you know heart centric um practices and you know also and also on the spectrum ranging from very high vibration and positive through to very negative um and i have past life memories of both uh, experiencing both and also being both um, and as, when I say both like that full spectrum, you know, from, from dark to light and everything in between. Um, and it, especially in Scotland, where I live here, there we have like we have a stone in, in the village just next to us where a lot of the, the, the witches were, were hung on a tree there. Um, and it's called Witch's Stone. There's a little um, a, a little cage around it and, and all the, the, the villagers and people that visit uh, leave little, um, these beautiful little messages and they often talk about all the, the herbs, you know, and the spices and the, the natural remedies uh, in these little messages and it's really promoting this very nature-focused um, healing and I think that's really helpful when we, we look, look back at our past and also it's not that long ago for, for these people, especially in the village, uh, it's only, you know, a, a couple of, or, you know, two, three, four, um, generations ago. So it's, it's not that far ago, uh, far away that they were going through these, um, these terrible experiences. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, send a lot of love to, to, to that as well. Um, so I'm going to ask, uh, since the statement is I used to be a witch in a past life, I'm just going to ask, like, what what was my last past life as as a witch, um, and and what 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 were my capabilities? So, asking my higher self, what was my last past life as a witch? I consider myself a witch, and showing me as a past life um, called Trinity. I call myself Trinity. And I was an energy worker. I worked in a 
an underground crystal cave that's very near here, and it's not been rediscovered for uh, for at least 250 years. It's really beautiful and very powerful, and it's a part of the energetic grid of the of the planet and on one of the ley lines that runs just near our town. And I was a gatekeeper of this 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 space. And there was a lot of like continued integration. Really, my whole focus was around integrating the high, very high vibration energy of the rocks and the land together. And also people would bring their seed to me as in, um, OK, so this is every dimension of the world. So literally like for crops, bags of seeds would be brought to be um, germinated and um, then taken back and planted. Um, and yield the really beautiful crops. And also people would go there to uh um to to consummate, to like to, to make love and to plant the seeds of uh their, their children. Um so that was really powerful, really beautiful. And that was that was my, my role was to integrate these energies together. And that's uh that's fascinating for me because it's also uh, and thank you yourself um it's also part of my uh, present awareness, although I call it a past life. Um, the fact that it's most recent, I, I see Trinity because I go running there each morning, Monday to Friday. So that's really beautiful. Um, I, I get to see her continually um, working with the energetic grid of the planets. And she describes her work now as being very, like, integrated. It's... Um, She's very much part of the grid itself, which is, you know, blows my mind to see her like with her arms out uh, either, either side of her and connecting, like allowing the grid to flow through her. But she's still like a set consciousness within it. Um, so, yeah. Wow. OK, so that's uh, past lives. Uh, and then we did uh, used to be a witch. So I see ghosts. Yeah, I see a lot of ghosts. Um, I When I think back as a child, I've always seen a lot of ghosts. Um, but depending on my belief system, I would or wouldn't, you know, uh, ignore them. And depending on my third eye ability, um, I, I wouldn't see them um, or, or would. And so to explain a bit more, when up until about the age of I'm just I'm actually like kind of reliving it and just witnessing it now and asking stuff, what, what was that age? But I remember seeing a lot of shadow figures. Um, I grew up in a lot of different old old houses. Um, we were always moving like every year or two. And yeah, the, that house had uh, these very dark uh, shadow figures that hid um, in one of the bedrooms. It was like they're kind of they're, they're, they're their safe space, n not for us. It was actually in my parents' room. Um, and yeah, they, I'm just seeing them moving around and it was terrifying to me. And I remember telling my parents about it and they, they kept telling me like, you ghosts aren't dark shadows. Like what you're seeing is just shadows. And so there's no need for me to scare, but I was terrified. Like I was really terrified because I could see them moving. Um, but that kind of, if you like that trauma that I then put myself through was like to just dim that that ability down like to close that ability down and over time i stopped stopped seeing them because I, every because every time i saw them i would dismiss them and say that's not real that's not um you know you're not a ghost you're just a shadow um and then as i mentioned i also went on like a, a ghost hunting you know uh, whatever, 15 years um, of like doing it online. And uh, I was always keen, like taking photos when I was out and about, trying to capture like orbs and stuff like that. Um, now I see them all the time and see everything, really. <laughs> so uh, some, and some of it started by seeing uh, near where I live, just out in the countryside, there's some standing stones. Um, and sometimes I'd, I see... I started seeing like shadow figures as like as plain as day, like, you know, like I could, I still see it. My mind's are really, really clear. Um, like just a shadow figure, like just floating across almost like an oval shape about, you know, maybe six foot tall and just floating across, um, the road and then across the field. Like, and I could 
like it was kind of one dimensional. It was like a kind of hole in, in the space and time, but it was absolutely alive and it was absolutely sentient. And it was traveling for quite some distance, like it had been traveling for miles. Um, I remember it was the, um, uh, sometimes it will describe it as like the, the, they travel on the wind. Um, that was some of my first experiences. I also remember when I was a teenager, I saw a very kind of dark, kind of demonic ghost being, um, I think it was more of a demon. Uh, when I worked in a hotel and I was there late at night by myself and I was putting away dishes and I walked past an open doorway and it was stood there above me and it was looking down at me, kind of making a kind of snarling noise. And it was very dismissive and thought that I was very small and in insignificant and disgusting. And that panicked me. <laughs> and I must admit, there was a few years after that that I, my life wasn't amazing. I had some amazing times, but there, I, I do wonder like if there was connections be between that. Um, and I absolutely went through, you know, through, through then I was like, I was very much shut down. Um, I shut myself down like psychically and often that's like a trauma response, right? Like we shut down these gifts or our different chakras, our different, uh, clear, uh, clear abilities. Um, so, so yeah, that's uh, now I see everything, right? I just see like, uh, in people's homes, uh, in, in visit the places that I visit. Sometimes it's like a full-bodied uh, apparition. Sometimes it's that I can see with my eyes. Sometimes it's a it's a, a knowing, like a clear sentience that they're there, and there's like this telepathy where they're they're an audience where they're like talking to me. Um, yeah, all, all the above. And I also work with clients to uh, to help them both help them see what's in there their homes and help clear their homes and I can do it remotely as well like uh, come into to someone's home energetically and uh, clear anything that doesn't have their uh, I see dead people well um yeah I see you know people a lot of people in my life I mean I'm 47 so I guess some of this is just uh, statistically more probable but a lot of people have died in my life over the last few years the last five years in particular um, in the region of about 20 people and every time someone's died they they come to me within a few days of dying sometimes immediately and just acknowledging that and remembering those 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 moments just now and i i know from their funerals people their 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 friends and family would say things like you know um whenever we miss you the most we'll, we'll we hope to feel your presence there we hope to feel you in our hearts or to remember the, those magical times. And that all helps so much, um, you know, no matter what's happened with the the person, their soul, their, their being, whether they've moved on to the lights or not, whether they're trapped or not, wherever they are. Um, so that, that's really beautiful. Um, do I see like grotesque, you know, like the movie The Sixth Sense, where it was like these kind of horrible distortions of torture beings yeah sometimes sometimes i see that but it's not like so i can far more easily discern between the different dimensions than i thought i could right so if there was four people standing in a room and there's a fifth that was a ghost like i like it's just really obvious to me like energetically the sh the, the shift in dimension that they're in um it can take a few seconds when I first see a being to then know which dimension it's it's in. And depending on the abilities and the power, the energy of the being, they will be able to manifest more strongly in these lower dimensions or higher dimensions, so whether they're in a lot of the you know ghosts and dead people that are kind of trapped between worlds exist in like the fourth dimension, uh, like the upside down in Stranger Things. Um, and then others are able to move things uh, like poltergeists do in um, in the physical world and also manifest more physically. And yeah, sometimes I see them. And for the first, like, especially when I'm at my morning run and I'm, my brain's taking a lot of stimulus in as I'm like running past trees. I'm not that fast. I'm not like the flash or anything. But, you know, as I'm as my mind's already quite loaded uh, visually and then something comes into my awareness, my first reaction is not to think that it's, you know, something, um, uh, you know, metaphysical. I tend to think it's physical first. And 
but the trick is never dismiss it, right? All what I always do is to say, I say, I see you, and and say it out loud. Um, and if it's like bothering you, if it's coming too close to you, or it's following you, tell it to leave immediately. You know, ha, you know, you command your space. Uh, your like auric field is area of about two meters out around you. It's your space, so tell it to go away. Um, I see negative entities or, you know, demons or um trying to think there's like so many different terms for these for these beings, right? But yeah, I see those too. Um I first started seeing them when I was doing energy healing for people and I was removing dark energy and attachments and things that were really not serving the highest good. Everything from like small leeches that attach onto our our energetic wounds through to very large, uh, sometimes, you know, even bigger than people, houses, even the size of like planets, like very dark demonic entities. Um, I see those. And what has really helped me is um, my belief system, knowing that uh, my mental models are that there's no judgment. Like there's just a spectrum from the dark to the light and everything in between. Everything has light, everything has dark, and it's just like like yin and yang, but there's just this concentration, you know, and a choice that, that every being has, depending on the scale where they want to, you know, feel and uh and act. And so for these negative entities, um, you know, sometimes it's with purpose that they want to remain in that vibration and it yields great power um and great sadness and, and pain all at the same time. Um, and so, yeah, I see them, they're all kinds of shapes and sizes. Um, some of them, yeah, they're, they're scary, right? And it's, it's good to be scared and then be brave. And I started my energetic work in this space of removing negative entities. So it really helped me address any, any fear, but, you know, still enough, like, uh, I guess, healthy fear of respect to know, um, not so much my limitations, but know the risks Right. I'm sure there are limitations to my abilities, um, but the risks um, working against some of these entities are are, you know, the, the larger, more powerful they are and more deceptive they are. Um, and the more of a hold they have over someone, like if it's more like an exorcism that I'm doing for someone, then that's like a much greater um, challenge. Right. And it means that I need preparation and clearing myself before I do the work and then you know, decompression and, and um, uh, debriefing and grounding and clearing afterwards. And often it's multiple sessions. You know, I've worked with clients, uh, including recently, where, uh, but not don't worry, not in the last few days, um, where I'm like helping them really with like an exorcism or helping them like with a, a sustained demonic attack um, and helping them get rid of this, this thing, you know, and it, or, or things. And it's, it's very powerful and very dangerous work. Um, I have been asked by some people, because I, I do the, like the kind of lighter versions of this, the, the more basic versions of my current training courses. Uh, but I've also been asked to create a training course that would go to this sort of depth, uh, literally to, to hell and back. Um, so, yeah, that's the course that I would definitely really have a... Uh, a very deep and thorough uh, vetting process before I took people on that training, um, mainly because it is dangerous. It is dangerous work. Um, and so uh, the good news is, like, you set your intention, you've got all the protection you need, you know, and just look at what you're consuming, look at what you give your power away to, and be very conscious and discerning with your energy. And this will help you beyond, you know, the abilities of any of these negative entities. Uh, and I see attachments or, you know, things attached to people. Um, for that, uh, it's funny, as I've gone through the list, I just get more and more relaxed and matter of fact about it. Um, but yeah, I just, I see all these different shapes and sizes of, of energetic attachments. They will, um, especially when someone's drinking alcohol or, or taking drugs and then they're, they're, interacting with me they can become very um triggered and provoked by me and uh, it creates tension right because it's an energetic shift between it's such a gap between like i'm hoping that my vibration is is high and clean and clear 
and where theirs is dark and becoming like more susceptible to being influenced and taken over by or partially uh, taken over by other negative beings and that's what happens when you drink alcohol that that difference in um in frequency can become very triggering for them in particular for me I'm more used to it, I guess. Uh, well, I am more used to it and being around people that are drinking. And I also just know that, you know, sometimes it, it's just the time as well. Like I can have exposure to people in that state for a period of time, but it's literally like doing energetic battle. And so if I'm around it for too long, it's really, just really draining for me. Um, everyone gets to choose what they drink, you know, what they, what drugs they take or whatever, whatever they do in their life. There's no, no judgment here it you know i've done all these things in the past and that was my decision at that time and it's now my decision to be sober and uh my you know, spiritual and metaphysical and psychic beliefs and experiences really help me um you know reinforce for me those decisions um but you know maybe it is it i'm not saying this is true or not right but it in a universe where uh someone isn't choosing to develop any of these abilities themselves um these psychic abilities then maybe it's safer for them because they're closed more closed down and maybe that makes them more protected i don't know uh or maybe it makes no difference and uh, they're just as vulnerable as maybe i would be if i drank alcohol right now um but yeah just be really careful um both with the choices of what you consume um in terms of food and drink uh, drugs, but then also with the content that you watch online, your horror movies, your um, your videos that you watch online, whatever it is, like the, the cleaner you can consume energy, um, the cleaner your energy will be. You are what you consume, and this also helps with with attachments. Um, and yeah, I will see like people's faces change and the entities like it's almost like i often see entities like coming out of people or on their shoulders like provoking at me it's almost like it's kind of dark like demonic or like a, a monkey or like a just a, a dark cloud or, or sometimes it's more like a demonic entity like right next to them um but the the entities often like to provoke me by showing me and trying to scare me because they're in partial influence or partial control or sometimes even full control of the human and that's the thing they love to trigger right it's like um they know that i'm confident excuse me they know that i'm very confident and capable metaphysically but physically are they they're they're trying to like test me as well and say well how much would you stand up to this person physically as well as metaphysically uh if this this entity had influence over them well, it's uh, over an hour now, and uh, if you've listened to all this, um, well done. I, I I feel like it's been on a, a big journey, um, and it's brave just listening to this stuff, right? Uh, you get to choose your beliefs. You get to choose um, what resonates with you, what doesn't. Um, I hope it gives you some ideas about the things that you'd like to explore yourself. Um, my, my journey has mostly been, you know, the biggest dominant um uh the progression that i've made has been my deepening my daily practice and really working towards my, my daily meditations strengthening those and that's helped me do all these these different things and and develop and, and activate these different parts of me um and and for you of course uh, you can choose to work with me um you can join my uh higher self foundational training which takes you from right at the beginning of mindfulness meditation uh, all the way through to um, we do some light language talking to our spirit guides individually and remembering some past lives um, and then my uh, higher self intermediate training which is a new course coming out um, later this year uh, you can already sign up for that it's like July August time it starts uh, another eight week course and that one will cover everything that we've just done um, and there's also going to be an advanced course which is up at the very edge of my uh, capabilities and um and and beyond a bit i'll be channeling in quite a lot of uh, information and teachings and abilities for that one so looking forward to doing that uh, perhaps by the end of this year 
so yeah excited uh to be sharing this and i hope that it helps you and if you made it all the way through to the end congratulations a part of me wants to like finish it like one minute and uh 11 i uh, want like one 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 but um i would be artificially just chatting a little bit like i am now to fill a minute um <laughs> just to like get an angel number um but yeah it was really magical taking you through this thank you so much please check out my website at uh, johnbinney.com um oh actually it says it here this is a new teach a uh, new top right uh, www.johnbinney.com and i look forward to hearing from you if you're interested in working with me or you just want to try my try my free seven day mindfulness meditation challenge or my free 14 day spirit guide meditation challenge they're all up to you so Yes, I hope this finds you well. Sending so much love from Scotland. If you have any requests for videos or any questions, let me know. Thank you. Sending love.